live with, brought to you by Species Nutrition. Visit speciesnutrition.com. I'm Dave Palumbo, and we got a special episode here for you. Exclusively here at RX Muscle, we bring you Flexitron, Sean Roden, and Chris Aceto, his trainer. And uh, welcome, guys. Yes, sir. All right, you're the big news of the week, Sean. Uh, you know, people were so excited to see you in that Arnold Classic lineup. You hadn't done the show for two years. You decided to throw your hat into the ring, and uh, a lot of people were saying, wow, Sean's going to, you know, this is going to be his big chance to finally get that big Arnold Classic win. I know you were doing great. Chris Aceto even flew out to California to see you. We saw the, I've been seeing the progress pictures from Chris. You looked amazing coming into this uh, prep. Tell us what happened and what forced you to back out of the show. Well, what's happening, guys? Uh, sorry, that's my wife. Um, you know, this was by far one of my, um, my, my best prep. And, you know, it's funny because I was in China and I sent Chris some pictures and, uh, he goes, Hey, we should do the Arnold. And I kind of laughed cause this was back in November. Um, and, um, uh, I kind of laughed because, you know, I was, I was somewhat impressed that I was still able to. Wholesome condition that from all the food that I've been eating, and I, I, I traveled the family in uh, in Europe after the Olympia, and you know, you know, ate like a pig, and you know, here I'm in China making some appearances, and you know, I was just eating and sent some pictures to Chris, and Chris is, hey, let's let's do it, you know. So right away, I kind of I went into that mode, like, okay, you know what, for the rest of this trip, I'm you know I'm dieting, you know, you know, I'm eating clean, and you know, all through the holidays. Well, you know, with that being said. You know, things were going great, man. I was having the best prep by far and, you know, getting my ass whipped every day by Psycho Fitness and, and, and Stamina. And, you know, everything was going great. Chris came out to see me. and I got to ask you, know, you that. how the heck did you get Chris to fly out there to California for the day? That, that might have been the greatest victory of all time. <laughs> you know what, you know, for, for some strange reason, I mean, you know, ever since I started working with Chris, We've, we've always been in the same wavelength. And, you know, I'm in D.C. visiting my, my, my mom. And I said, hey, you know what? You know, you should come out. You know, and Chris was like, okay. <laughs> and I was like, wow. He was like, you know, let me look at the calendar. He goes, let me know when you're back in California. <laughs> and I, I laughed because, you know, I, I remember telling my girl, my like, Chris is coming out. And she goes, is he coming out for the prep? I was like, no, nah, maybe for a day. And she goes, why? <laughs> <laughs> Chris, how did yeah. you convince your wife to let you go out for, for one day to California? Well, the, the truth of the matter is, Dave, <clears throat> I can get away for a day because I can be in my office for a, uh, an entire day. Nobody even knows where I am. They just know <laughs> that I'm in the office. So I just said, you know, I'm going to – I got a lot of paperwork to catch up on, and nobody disturbed me in my office. I snuck off to L.A. for a day. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so, what, so nobody what did you, knew I even went. How's that? What did you see when you saw Sean? And how many weeks out was this at that point? Six, Sean? Six? Yeah, about six, six weeks. Six, and um, we'll let Sean, Sean, Sean can tell you. Well, yeah, what did you say when you saw him? And, you know, um, in my mind, I'm thinking, man, Christmas think I'm sending pictures filtered. You know, maybe that's the reason why he wanted to come <laughs> and take a look at me, you know, to make sure that, you know, I was where I'm supposed to be at. But, you know, this prep, you know, meant a lot to me, whereas... I just wanted to make sure that, again, you know, me and Chris were on the same page. And, you know, when when you have, I always tell people, Chris has the greatest mind that I've ever seen. And every year I would fly out to L.A., um, to Vegas, when Chris is out at the USA's. And my physique would change literally the next week. Like, he would take, you know, two minutes, look at me. And then he goes, okay, I know exactly where you're at. And I would go back home, and that, that week, my body would just change drastically. You know, so, you know, six weeks to go, I was like, okay, you know what? I want to make sure that 100% I'm on point. I am not leaving Columbus without winning this show. And, you know, Chris came out, and, you know, he was like, wow. He goes, and Chris have used a lot of technology with me over the years. You know, I've looked like Bird of Fox. <laughs> I've looked like Brown, and he goes, Man, you were round as an ele as a baby elephant. <laughs> he goes, you're full, you're hard, and I'm like, okay, I'm on point. You know, so 
you know, it was just good for him to come out and, and, and see where I'm at. And, you know, I had, um, took the train down from Santa Barbara because the roads were blocked from the rainstorm that we had, you know, so I couldn't get to the normal gym that I was training at. So I literally took the train down uh, from Santa Barbara to L.A. and, you know, rented a place where, you know, I could get some training in with these guys and we were doing two-a-days. And, you know, I think within 14 days, we, we did like um, 20-something training session, that included wow. cardio. Wow. Um, you know, I was, you know, I, I tell everyone that asked me, I was like, I, I felt great. So what was yeah. your symptoms? At what point did you know something wasn't right? You know, to be honest, um, I, I, I text Chris and I said, you know, Chris, you know, we did X amount of training session. I was like, you know, um, you know, my, my girl was doing a fundraiser in Santa Barbara. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to take Friday off and I'm, I'm going to drive up and, you know, see the family and, you know, help her out with a fundraiser she was doing for the victim of uh, the recent flood and fire. And I... I I honestly, the God still felt great. I didn't feel sick. That you know, I'm driving up that Thursday night and I felt like I was getting the flu, and that was just about it. You know, I got to Santa Barbara and I was just like, okay, you know what, man, Sean, you literally beat yourself in the ground these last two weeks, you know, training, and you know, I was like, you know, I think I'm just coming down with the flu, so. You know, I get to Santa Barbara and, you know, Chris had worked out a meal plan for me for that day. And I got up the morning, sent Chris pictures and um, started eating. And I think it was maybe like my third or fourth meal. I, I ate and I, I felt real sick. I'm like, oh, shit. I was like, don't tell me that fish was bad. And I just, I just started throwing up and running to the bathroom. And that went on like all day and you know me being me i kept trying to eat <laughs> right i was like i still gotta get my next meal in like you know I was, I was getting sick so i gotta get my next meal in i was like i gotta i gotta finish my meals for the day and i was just you know throwing up i was in the bathroom and it got to the point where i was so dehydrated i remember standing in the shower like drinking the water you know like man what the hell is wrong with me were you were you throwing and, up blood sean at all it was black, but I, I still thought I had food poison. Oh. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, uh, Michelle had came home, and she said, what the hell is going on? And I'm like, babe, just, just leave. I don't want you to get sick. You got your fundraiser tomorrow. <laughs> Go to your mom. <laughs> and, you know, kicked her out of the house because I'm like, you know, I can't afford for her to get sick. Right. You know, because, again, I thought, you know, I had the flu. So I was like, you know, she's going to go to her mom with her daughter, and, and I'm going to. Weather the storm, I'll be okay in, in the next morning. Right. And the next morning, it was the same thing. as It was just ongoing. And, you know, I text Chris. And, you know, Chris know me. I, I never complain about anything. I'm like, Chris, and I, you know, I don't know what's going on. I'm still sick. And I feel so dehydrated. He goes, okay, listen, I want you to go to the emergency room and, you know, get an IV. You know, we got plenty of time. And in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, man, I'm not messing this up. Like, I got, you know, this is going to pass. Right. You know, I'll be okay. Like, I just need I just need to get some fluid in me, so. Before, uh, all right, stop the story there for a second, Sean. Chris, when Sean called you up, you know Sean. Sean was really mentally sh focused on this show. He was doing great. What were you thinking when he when he calling you up and he's telling you, yeah, I can take a day off from the gym, and then he's calling you and saying he's throwing up? What's going through your head at this point? Well, since I have the greatest memory next to Trump, uh, <laughs> actually, when it comes to bodybuilding, I have a great memory. Other things, I, you know, I told you, Dave, we have to be done this show by a certain amount of time because I have left my four-year-old at daycare, forgetting yeah. about him. But I know exactly where I was when it comes to bodybuilding when Sean texted me and said, you know, I'm very, very tired and I'm taking tomorrow off. I don't think he's ever texted me and said he's very very tired i was coming over the bridge in my town and i pulled over and i called him immediately and i said you okay and he sounded great and uh, i just thought that i should call him to see if he was okay simply because he never uses you know the word tired really he doesn't 
and you know we've been he can tell you you know we've been places on tours after shows where you get ridiculously tired on these tours right and sean's never said i'm tired or if i've ever said you know you got to go to the gym or you got to pose i'm tired but when he says i'm really tired you know you you stop and you call and you say you know what's the matter because you know that's uncharacteristic of him so uh but he sounded great that was like a thursday i guess and um he sounded totally fine and i said okay you know goodbye and then when i talked to him the next day via text uh it was surprising that i didn't hear from him for a long period of time and i he said that he was throwing up and he was he said i said you okay same thing you could knock Sean over the head with seven hours of straight cardio and say, are you okay at, you know, hour number seven? He'd say, yeah, I'm okay. You need me to do another hour? So when he said, uh, I'm not okay, I'm th throwing up, that's different than I'm throwing up because throwing up is just, well, okay, you know, everyone throws up from time to time for something. Uh, but when he said, I'm not okay, uh, then I knew something was up 100% sure something was up and um i think it was like six hours later i just checked in again and he had fallen asleep or something and he said uh you know i'm in the most pain i've ever been in in my life and uh, immediately i said you know go to the hospital so sean you go to the hospital emergency room and and uh, no, what did they do for you no dave i didn't go to the hospital oh, you i didn't? sit there about the show i'm like okay sean just a couple more hours you're gonna be okay like whatever's in your system <laughs> has to pass and um, they, my father-in-law called me. He's been bugging me all day. And um, anybody that know Mike Richards, Richards should know that he's very persistent. And he kept calling and texting. I keep, like, decline, like, uh. just don't stir, like. And then he says, uh, you know, I was like, well, Chris and I should go to the hospital. And he goes, I'm on my way. <laughs> oh, really? He made you go then? Yeah, Thank he God. Showed, up at the, showed up at the front door. And he was like, I'm taking you to the emergency room. And in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, you know, I'm like, I'm, Papi, I'm okay. He's like, you know, I think it's just food poison. And he goes, nope, we're going to the emergency room. And, you know, he got me to the emergency room. And, you know, by then I knew something was up because I, I just felt dead. And, you know, we got in and he says, you know, I think he has the flu. He's been thrown up for the past 24 hours. And... You know, they were like, well, you know, the flu's been going around. You know, they start checking my vital signs and, you know, drew some blood. And then the nurse kind of came back and looked at me. And she's like, um, yeah, we need to admit you. And I'm like, for what? All right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, she's like, I need to get a doctor. And I'm like sitting here going again saying, why? You know, so the doctor came in and, you know, by then they were hooking me up to these machines. And I'm trying to figure out. You know, that was the flu that bad that, you know, I'm getting this much attention, you know, to keep, you know, checking my blood pressure, checking my oxygen level. And um, they're like, you know, we something isn't right. Your uh, hemoglobin is below four. And I'm like, I know I read about this somewhere before in a book. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, that's, that's not right. Like, you should be like 15 probably, yeah. Yeah, I'm like, in, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, where did I, you know, I'm trying to remember, like, where did I read this, and what did it say about it? And I just kind of, like, dozed off for a second, and um, the next thing I knew, they were like, hey, we need to get you a blood transfusion. And I'm like, I, I kind of perked up, and I'm like, what? I'm like, I got a show in, in, in five weeks. Right. And, and the doctor's kind of looking at me like, I'm like, I just need some IV, I just need some fluid. And he's like, no, no, we need to. And by then, it's like my father-in-law is looking at me, um, and I'm like, okay, this is this something isn't something isn't right. And but I just I couldn't focus because my mind was like all over the place. Like my show, why need, why do I need a blood transfusion? They need me to sign this paperwork. You know, Michelle come running in the hospital now you know, from work, and you know she's freaking out, looking at me. I and mean, she's like, I'm. You know, she's like, you're as, she's like, you're white at this point. <laughs> and I'm saying, no, baby, no, I think it's for me being in the shower. I just need some lotion. <laughs> but, you know, I'm, I'm trying to be positive. Like, you right. know, I, 
I just needed some lotion. I'm just. Well, you're you're in the, you're in the utmost of denial, obviously, at this point. Yeah, <laughs> you know, wrong. And, uh, but they were like, you know, keep trying to get me blood, and they were like, we're gonna have to call another ambulance to take you to a different hospital. And that's when I kind of thought, okay, something is this is really serious. And you know, they're giving me a blood transfusion to the next hospital, and you know. She's standing there looking at me, going, what happened? Like, you know, what's going on? What did Chris say? I'm like, he's been trying to get me to get to the emergency room all day. Like, why didn't you go? <laughs> <laughs> did you feel yeah. better as you were getting the blood transfusion? No, I was just, I, I felt, listen, Dave, I felt like someone had literally, like, punched a small hole in the balloon, and it was slowly draining. Really? And, you know, we get to the second hospital, and... You know, it was a really nice doctor. His name was Andrew, and, you know, he kept trying to talk to me, and I'm zoning out, and he's like, we need to get this blood a lot quicker in you. And that's when I kind of figured out something wasn't right, you know, because he was like, we need to get it faster in you. And I'm, I'm like thinking, well, why? And he started explaining, like, you're bleeding somewhere. We're not sure where, what's going on, um, but we need to get the blood a lot quicker in you. And he goes, um, the last blood we drew, you're still below four, and we need to get it into you a lot quicker. And um, I just kind of was like, all right, you know what? So, like, we're going to have to do a scope and try to figure out what's going on because this is not right. And, you know, it was kind of shocking because I'm like, I felt great. Like, right. How do they get the blood into you faster, Sean? What do they do for that? Um, I think it was just pumping it a lot quicker into my vein. Okay. I, had, I mean, I have a couple of pictures that Michelle don't want me to post because she was like, you know, you know, people in social media are so stupid nowadays that sometimes they take things the wrong way. Like, you know, someone posts and I'm going to track this guy down, you know, kind of post, oh, Chris Aceto, the pro killer. And I'm like, dude, like, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like... I'm like, what does this have to do with Chris? <laughs> you know. So, but, so when did they actually diagnose what was going on? How did they figure it out? With this, the, did they put a scope the down? Next you? Morning, the next morning, they uh, a couple of doctors came in a room and they tried to explain to me, like, you know, this is going to be either of two ways. Uh, first, we're going to uh, try to get a camera, you know, down your throat to see what's going on. And he goes, if that doesn't work, then we have to go up the other way. And I'm like, oh. Okay, and like, because they're, they're like, you know, you've lost a lot of blood and we don't know why. Um, so after they do the scope, I think by then I was on like my third bag of blood. Right. And, um, you know, I don't even remember how that happened. Like, I remember they give me a bunch of medication. The next thing I know, I woke up and Michelle was like, oh, they're finished. <laughs> and uh, that's when they came back a couple hours later and they said, hey, um, then I have two ulcer, a large and a small, that's been bleeding over a period of time. So this wasn't something that just happened, you know, that day. Because of the flu, I went in the hospital and they found this out. You know, so this has been something that's been going on for a while. And I remember the doctor saying, hey, you know what, did you check your stool? I'm like, for well, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, seriously? He goes, yeah, you know, you know, that's something that anyone should do you know because normally if your stool is tarry and mean that you have internal bleeding did you notice uh, that now thinking back I, I i try to think as far as back as you know two years ago i got sick at the olympia uh, and chris carved me up in donuts and protein powder i had like just really weird you know, stomach problem from eating salmon that I told myself I was never going to never going to eat again. So, but I just for some strange reason, I, I just the whole thing just I drew a blank. Right. <laughs> did you did you did they test you for H. pylori to see if you had the uh, the bacteria that causes stomach ulcers? Yes, they uh, checked me for that also and came back negative. Um, thank God. Right. Um, but after seven bag of blood, my level was finally up to. Like eight point two. Wow. Um, and even then, you know what? I was still telling Chris. You know, I got out of the hospital and I, and I sent Chris pictures, and I'm like, you know, we can still do this. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what people don't realize is when you lose a lot of blood, 
you know, your body compensates by taking the liquid, the fluids that you're drinking, and, and, and replaces the volume of the blood. The problem is that you're, you're missing red blood cells, so your oxygen carrying capacity is very low. The fact that you yeah. were able to train with such low hemoglobin, hematocrit, is, is incredible. I, how you did it is, is a miracle. It just shows how uh, the mental fortitude that you have to be able to go to the gym and focus, because you were obviously operating at a tremendous handicap. You know, at the, at the doctor that morning, he said to me, he's like, Mr. Roden, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. He's like, um, your level's been low for a while. He's like, but with your mental capacity and being an athlete, he goes, I think you just train your body to kind of go at whatever was going on. He goes, most people wake up and they're tired. He goes, man, I'm tired. I'm going to take the day off. He goes, you probably wake up and you're like, man, it's going to be one of those days. All right, let's just get it over with. <laughs> he goes, you, you train your body to basically run on E all this time. He goes, and he goes, had you not caught the flu, you'd have probably get up and went to the gym the next day and train. And you'd have figured it out when it's too late. Do you, Sean, you know, you, the last couple of, the last Olympia, you know, you were having some stomach issues in terms of, of, of distension issues and stuff like that. Uh, could that have been, does the doctor think maybe that could have had something to do with it? Because obviously at the end of your diet, you carb up a lot, and that had to irritate your stomach lining, and I'm sure you were bleeding at that point. Do you think that had something to do with, you know, the fact that your conditioning kind of crashed at the Olympia? In, in the back of my mind the last couple of days, um, I, I thought about that because, you know, things just happened weirdly in the past two Olympias for me. Um, even Chris will tell you, like this past Olympia, like my body just was very funky. We were in the room and I looked like I was, you know, going to win the Olympia for the next three years. <laughs> and I went to, you know, backstage and had no idea what happened. Like we get backstage and my body just was like, okay, hold on a second. I'm not ready. I got back to the room and I looked lights out. <laughs> right. And, you know, I'm looking back now and I'm like, I think my, you know, the past couple of years, my body was just literally fighting itself. Um, you know, because we did everything the way that it should have been done. Yeah. And, you know, I'm just thankful right now that when all is said and done that, I, you know, I'm still here, you know, you know, Chris said something to me yesterday and I, I laugh. I'm going to say it because, you know, it's like one of those moments when you kind of think, you know, and he was like, hey, you've been driving 150 miles per hour down the highway with bicycle tire in a car. <laughs> that's the best way to put things in perspective. Yeah. You know, people understand the willpower that it takes to be uh, a pro bodybuilder, much less a pro bodybuilder competing at the highest level. You know, sure. most people take a day off on a headache. You know, we just... We just keep going without even thinking. Chris, how do you uh, now alter, you know, maybe uh, Sean's dietary needs until, you know, that stomach really fully heals up? Is there a, is there a change in how you're feeding him now? I'm not that smart, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are. I don't know. I don't know. But I can tell you, you know, it's two things. is I just dawned on me right now is um, 2000... Uh, 16 Olympia, you know, um, Sean had uh, really bad acid reflex last two days before the show, right? Yeah. I think I told you that, Dave. I said, what do you, yeah. what, what, you know, Sean can't eat. What do you do for acid? I, whatever you told me, it didn't work. You know, like yeah. Tom, you know, and I, and so he couldn't eat. So that 2016, he got second. I think the only thing, you know, you, you have to go the nuclear option, and the nuclear option is, well, you can't eat, like, potatoes because it's, he can't keep anything down, you know what I mean, with the acid. Yeah. So the only carb source that I think he had, like, towards the end was, like, donuts and protein oh. powder because he couldn't eat any meat. It was, <laughs> you know, ruining his, you know, his stomach <laughs> hurting. So that's what he, you know, he ate the last maybe day, two days, running <laughs> into the 2016 oh. Olympia. Sean, did you so it, remember that? It's, I, I guess the, the point, Dave, I'm making is that the, the ulcer might have been around, you know, you know, rearing its head more aggressively, you know, as you diet down and, you know, you're on your last leg, so to speak. 
Sean, do you remember? Do you remember that uh, Olympia when you couldn't eat? Does, does that oh, remind I, you of how I, the way I, you felt lately? I, I kept, you know, I keep telling people, you know, yeah, I got second. I was like, um, you guys have no idea what the past couple of days were like. Um, I was like, you know, thank God Chris is a quick thinker. Where, you know, most people would have been like taking me to the hospital. You know, we decided to do donuts in, from Guy Sisterina room. <laughs> And whey protein, and I was still able to get second place. <laughs> you know, so the question I though, think this Olympia is going to be great. Yeah, well, the, <laughs> well, Sean, great. the question is now: How do you prevent this from happening again? What What do the doctors feel? Is it healed up? And what do they think is the the cause of of this also to begin with? It's not H. pylori. Is it stress? And how do you manage that stress so you don't have another recurring episode? The problem was I never seemed stressed on the outside. That's one thing. And I think I need to start. If something is bothering me, I, I just think I just need to just show that I'm pissed off or stressed about certain things. And, um, you know, I, I know in the past, you know, as the doctor said that, it could have been from stress or um, like ibuprofen. Oh, yeah. You know, he's like, you know, if you have a headache or if you feel sore, take Tylenol. Right. You know, so, you know, that's the only thing that I can think of right now, whereas... Were you, you taking know, a lot it, of ibuprofen? I, I did in the past. Um, like how much? I, so, a, a while back, I was training and I thought I, I, I tore my pec. Yeah. So, I went to my doctor and they gave me a bunch of uh, 800 milligram ibuprofen. Right. And... I would do two or three of those a day, you know, yeah, I was, you know, for a while because I thought, you know, I, I tore my pec. So I think 2016, for most of my prep, I was so paranoid that, you know, I, I know for a fact that I, I did overuse ibuprofen, you know, oh. okay, well, that's... The, that, this, I wasn't going to miss a day of training. <laughs> Right. Well, that you know that at least you have a cause now of what could have uh, yeah. could could have done it. So that that's a lot better than not knowing anything, you know. Yeah. You know, but Dave, you know, the good thing that came out of this is I I, I end up with a really great primary care physician. Oh, good. That <laughs> actually <laughs> understand bodybuilding. You know, but <laughs> Chris, that you know this guy, like he was, like really and truly understand, you know, what a bodybuilder goes through. And like the minute we sat down, you know, for my last doctor visit and started talking to him, it was just like, where the hell have you been my entire career? Like, well, he's, he's you know, here, the most important part of it now. So moving you know, forward now, um, Sean, uh, obviously the Arnold doubt, the Olympia is, is the next on the docket, so to speak. You still haven't gotten the win there yet. That's the, the ultimate goal, obviously. How are you going to... Uh, I guess, check up to make sure that this situation doesn't rear its head again. Are you getting regular blood tests to check your hemoglobin hematocrit? How are they, how are they doing this? Um, and that's the reason why I said I end up finding the best primary care physician because now um, this doctor is like, hey, you know, I want to make sure that, you know, it's like I'm going to schedule routine blood work um, um, so that we have an understanding of where you're at. And... Um, you know, like I have one coming up in March um, because he wants to make sure that he knows exactly where I'm at and what's going on. Right. Um, you know, so Here. I'm Come looking on. forward. I have an emergency. Talk the answer right now. One second, guys. <laughs> um, he wants to make sure that I get my, my blood work done routinely. Right. Um, so I'm looking forward to this. How's the training going? The training is a little bit hard because I'm just getting back into it. Um, funny thing is Jim Manning is out here, and uh, I sent a message to the Arnold folks and to Jim Manning, and, you know, he ended up calling me back that day, and we spoke for a while, and he was like, you know, I want you to take some time off and rest. Two days later, you know, I'm in the gym, trying to train and Jim walked in and he goes, what are you doing here? <laughs> I caught you. <laughs> That's and I'm like, um, I'm trying to stay loose. And he goes, no, I told you, you need to rest. <laughs> he goes, <laughs> he goes oh, 
I need you to focus on the Olympia. And I'm like, Jim, I'm, I'm not trying to move mountains. So I was like, I'm, I'm just trying to look at the mountain. I was like, I've been training for this, I don't know, for so long that, you know, me staying home and staring at the wall is, is going to do me no good. I was like, plus, my, my doctor says that, you know, he's need me to be in the gym, you know. So the past couple of days, you know, every time I, you know, Jim has been out here the past couple of days, he's been, you know, I told you to take it easy, Sean. <laughs> I told you to take, don't, don't rush back. You know, you don't need to rush back. Yeah. You know, so that for me, that that was good because, you know, he's the president of the Federation and, you know, he actually genuinely, you know, he pulled Psycho Fitness aside the other day and was like, are you sure Sean should be training right now? <laughs> yeah. You know, so that for me, that's good. Well, it sounds like you're in a good place mentally. Uh, Chris, uh, is is the plan now the Olympia? And, and at what point do you start his prep? Because I know in the past... I don't want to sell, you know, tell rat on Sean, but in the past you've said that Sean started very fat. I guess you don't want that to happen again this year. Well, you know, the bottom line is he's only got one show to do this year. It's the Olympia. I mean, he's done one show in the past, but I mean, I don't know. You know, you start when you feel good, right? Yes, sir. Sean, are you, was, do you have any other desire to maybe pump into another show, maybe New York Pro or something like that, or do you want to just wait at this point? My goal, to be honest, uh, Dave, is I'm just going to focus on, on the Olympia. And um, for me, this one is going to be a special one because me and Chris, just, we had a conversation the other day. I'm going to keep it between me and Chris, but I'm, uh, I'm focused on making this Olympia very special. All right. Now, you know, I want to just bring up another thing. I understand that you, you are no longer with your supplement company that you're working for. Are you a, an available free agent at this point? I'm available free agent. And, um, you know, this, uh, this sport is very sh strange at times. You give 100%. And, um, you know, you never know what's going to happen. And, you know, yes, I'm available free agent. And I might have to, you know, Call Dave up and sign with Species. Or... <laughs> there you go. I don't know if I can afford you, but uh, I would certainly uh, be pleased to put you on my image because you have a, a physique that a lot of people would uh, sell their soul for. And uh, I think that you're good for the sport. Um, you're, a, you're a Mr. Olympia physique waiting to happen, and uh, you've been very close. I can't even imagine what it must feel like to be second you know, at the Olympia multiple times and, and just barely missed that title. It's got, it's got, you got to be super hungry for that. I am starving, Dave. I am literally starving. And that's the reason why this year, 2018, is going to be, I'm going to make it very special because, you know, case in point, I have someone recently that, you know, for example, that I have a lot of uh, respect for that, you know, said some stuff that really kind of pissed me off, you know, kind of make it seem as if the reason why I pulled out of the Arnold was because I wasn't in shape. And the reason I was training twice a day was because I wasn't in shape and you know, a bunch of bullshit. And, you know, just kind of get under my skin where I'm like, anybody that knows me that I put in my heart and soul, I, you know, sacrifice my family. I do everything. And, you know, Michelle will tell you, my daughter, you know, if she could speak, she will tell you, you know, every morning, you know, whatever it's zero degrees outside or 120 degrees, you know, daddy's going to make muscle. Daddy has to go to the gym, you know, and <laughs> for someone to make such a comment. Who, did, who said know? that? That sounds like a Sean Ray statement to me. No, it wasn't Sean Ray. If it was Sean Ray, I would say it was Sean Ray. But at the end of the year, we'll see because, you know. I think sometimes, you know, certain competitors get to a certain point where, you know, they feel as if they're bigger than the sport. And I'm here to say that, hey, the sport is going to be here after you're gone. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sean, I think your mental, your, your mental state seems very good. I'm glad to hear that physically you're doing well again. You, you, you know, your blood is, is, your blood levels are up to normal again. And you're back in the gym training. I think a lot of people were worried about you. And, yeah, we're all going to miss you at the Arnold. But the more important thing is the, is the long game, 
a long picture, and it seems like uh, you got that Olympia focus going, and I know between you and Chris Aceto that uh, we're going to see the best Sean Roden we've ever seen come September. We're going to be up to our own our little shenanigan, and um, we're going to be scheming. <laughs> there we go. Chris, any final words? No, I just look forward to the Olympia, actually. You know, I look forward to going to, to the Arnold to see how it pans out. But I look forward, uh, you know, to seeing um, how Sean ends up looking at the Olympia because I know that, uh, you know, that he can improve from here. I, the best the best Sean Roden is, you know, I know that's a cliche, but the best, no one has seen the best Sean Roden because the best Sean Roden is, you know, will show up in, September. All right. That's what we want to hear. That's what the fans want to hear. And uh, like I said, all the fans out there, I know we're wishing you uh, the best, Sean. And uh, if anyone's interested in signing Sean, you can contact him through his Instagram. I know he's on there day and night. So uh, that, with that final statement, that's going to take us to the end of another episode of Live With, brought to you by Species Nutrition. Visit speciesnutrition.com. I'm Dave Palumbo, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>